Hello and welcome to the second annual Art of Resilience Virtual Art Show, version 2022, Spring Renewal. This show is one that could not occur without the incredible art facilitators and program staff that we have here at Gilda's Club. Jasmine Karzako <laughs> built the navigational structure of tonight's gallery and has been involved behind the scenes in too many ways to mention. Tonight could not happen without her. Thank you also to Debbie Slewinski for counting and editing and all kinds of help in crunch time. Thank you to Brad Most, our marketing director. Nobody would come to know this opening was happening without you. It has been my honor to work with and support a lot of the artists who are sharing their work this evening. My name is Sophie Canaday. I facilitate Sewing with Sophie, Community Art, and a Book Support. Our other art facilitators include Audra Eisen, Baz ben Benazak, I can't say names tonight, pardon me, who facilitates Unleash Your Creativity and Journaling. Lauren Flyin facilitates our Spanish language pro art program, Arte y Manuelidades, a class to enhance concentration, express individual creativity, and celebrate Latinx culture. Our other art facilitator is Katie Wisniewski, who hosts The Kitchen Table. Cooking is therapy for all of those who love to eat. These extraordinary people make Gilda's Club Chicago's creative arts program very special and make evenings like this possible. We have an incredible arts team here, so please investigate all the programs that we currently have on offer. You can find descriptions of all of our creative activities on our website. Thank you most of all to the artists who are willing to share their creative work and their stories behind them with us here tonight. This event is a real testament to your resilience and strength. And for all of us, it is a beautiful demonstration of our community. Welcome again. My name is Sophie and I will be your tour guide this evening. I'd like the theme of the quarantine quilt to introduce our exhibition. Cancer brought us together and a virus kept us apart, but we stitched ourselves a, home, a place called home. Each of the houses depicted in this quilt were made by a different member of the community. They were made in our separate quarantined homes from bits and pieces of our lives that surrounded each of us. Then the squares were sent to the clubhouse where they were placed together to form one fabric. The words written by Brenda Russell speak well not only of the quilt, but also Gilda's Club Chicago as a whole. Our creative community has stitched, woven, constructed, drawn, painted, and baked many ways to endure and to remain connected through these strange times. The blankets you see here were made by Megan Healy. They're crocheted blankets to comfort and delight her godchildren. Up in the right corner, you see Felicia Carparelli has crocheted hats for her grandbaby who lives across the ocean. In this room, we see more ways that our members have used their stitches to send care to friends, family, and strangers. On the right, these lovely pastel hats are ones that Barb Simon knits regularly. She gives them to hospitals to warm the heads of babies who are born prematurely. On the right, Mar Maureen Bardusk has cut strips of greeting cards then stitched and woven them onto canvas to make a physical manifestation, sending good karma to friends and family. To the left, we see two small lap quilts made by Juanita Phillips. The one at the top has been made as a tribute to the memory of Shelley Stone, fellow crafter and Gilda's Club member. 
During the making of this quilt, Juanita listened to a book that Shelley had suggested for the book club called The Music of Bees. The making and listening became a way for Juanita's body and mind to process the grief of her loss and to appreciate the gift of having known her brilliance. The Music of Bees and the quilt below it, the Peaceful Green Baby Quilt, will be featured as auction items in the silent auction during this year's gala event. So you can keep an eye out for that. The artists in this room have used broken and discarded material to construct stories of healing, renewal, and even rebirth. Becky Clemens's iron heart is split down the middle and has holes but she has used metal here to lace the parts together. The holes remain, but she will continue. Wendy Johnson has made radiating patterns to form a mandala out of toilet paper rolls. Using magazine scraps to create something completely new, Ling Shun Bianca Lee reflects on her piece, Honor My Truth and that's in the gold frame towards the center. The time of renewal and rebirth offer an opportunity for us to be still and make space. We listen and witness all of the layers that make us who we are. We speak up and show up as more true versions of ourselves. I was in a hurry. Turning more trash into treasure, Juanita Phillips has used something called Plarn to save the world. And now let's welcome Juanita to elaborate. Hi, how are you doing? Um, I learned how to make mats for the homeless from a neighbor in 2019. Each mat takes about 600 grocery store bags and several months. Our condo building's receiving room is a collection point for me, and I can pick up the bags that the neighbors need. I'm now working on my fourth mat. They go to the Chicago Help Initiative, an organization started by our neighbor. In all of the Gilda's Zooms, we are balancing how cancer and COVID has impacted us. And we can check in on each other. We care for the environment and the world around us. Gilda's Club Chicago is vital and vibrant and welcoming. And golly sakes, I'm lucky to be part of it. Thank you so much for that, Juanita. Drawing a portrait is like trying on another person's appearance. Some part of you inhabits the way they feel, the mood in the curve of the lip, the light in the eye. Drawing is empathy enacted. I think a lot about the connection Dominique Lagunas felt when he drew this portrait of his mother, the one in the center. He describes his mother as a warrior, and we can see the loving gratitude he has for her in this piece, Luz de Esperanza, Light of Hope. We have entered a room with some extra dimensions seen in the cubist elements of this work on the left by Ollie Swan. Ollie, will you please speak about your piece, A Look Into Myself? Oh, you're muted. Okay, can you hear can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, my art piece was inspired by during this time, I guess I think I was in um initial creativity class and I was feeling very down 
because a lot of a lot of things were going on in my life at the time, a lot of depths, a lot of sickness, and just all kinds of things. And I um, sort of just started coloring and coloring, and all of a sudden, it came. It it ended up looking like this. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just coloring, but uh, I tried to show the sad part of me and then the happy part when I started thinking about how blessed I am to be alive and able to even even join Gilda's Club. And so the picture I drew and colored rather, it was more of uh, showing how this Gilda's Club really works because I never knew that I could do anything like this. But thanks to Sophie that she's all, she always pushes me and I am so happy you know, to be able to present this. And I'm really amazed at the picture of myself when I look at it. I can't really believe I really did it. But I am so happy for the Gilders Club. It offers so many wonderful classes and I don't know what I would have done without it. So thank you so much and I appreciate it. And I did, you know, with, with neuropathy in my fingers, you know, and I managed to do it. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Ollie. It, it's incredible work. Immediately next to Ollie's many selves, we have this work of lines and graphs studying planes and intersections. This is by David Henscher, who used art to manage living with his one self during the pandemic. David, are you available to speak? I'm not sure if David is here, um, but he did write this to accompany his work. Living alone during the pandemic was very difficult for me. However, attending this online event helped me feel less isolated. Since I was completely focused on doing my art, time passed swiftly and I was having fun. As we are already going into other realms, we enter a room created of planets, invented lands, and inhabited by fantastical creatures and new ways of being. Amy Noonan is here to tell us about her explorations with her piece, Fauvism over Lincoln Park Pond. Oh, you are muted. Unmuting myself would help. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I have always loved art. Okay, now I'm getting a phone call from my sister. That's not going to work very well. Um, excuse me. Um, and, and prior to my initial diagnosis and then my recurrence of cancer, I did not do much art work because I felt that um, the work I was making wasn't good enough. I was a bit of a perfectionist. Excuse me again turn that off now. Um, I was a bit of a perfectionist and felt I couldn't recreate um, what I wanted to in a form of art um, and what I was seeing, which I wanted to do. Uh, since I've been on this um, topsy-turvy road of healing and then recurrence, um, I have had so many different emotions, um, the gamut. Uh, finding Gilda's Club has been incredible for me and my recovery. Uh, and it's just been amazing um, to be with a community that is all, we're all going through so many different things, but we all are able to come together and support each other. And it's definitely made me feel more connected during my, uh, during my healing. Um, the first class I attended was actually on phobism and I had no idea what to express, express, fact, excuse me. Um, Fauvis style is much more wild. It sort of came after impressionism and, um, I had always looked at it, but never really appreciated it. And I found the courage and the strength in the bold colors, um, and very loose style. And as someone that was very critical of my own work. Um, I found this very freeing and um, really just satisfying um, to be able to 
put purple purple in the sky and red on the land and um it just was very healing for me and i've really been grateful to be a part of the art classes and been continuing to take more um and open myself up to more experiences and have learned from this that perfection is pretty much non-existent um and i appreciate all that i'm seeing and doing now and look forward to continuing on this way. And I think it has helped me along my journey and been a part of my resilience, um, having the time and space to create art with others as they journey on with their cancer healing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. It has really been a pleasure to get to see you expressing yourself. There were a lot of birds painted this year, and it's easy to see why they may be an inspiration. Birds are usually such small, seemingly vulnerable creatures, and yet they can soar incredible distances for sustained amounts of time. Even in cases of flightless birds, we can see that they endure impossible cold temperatures. And as we notice in Danette Toledo's Christmas penguins, sometimes they just need a little warming help from some scarves. Um, I would love to hear Martha Marie Kleinhan speak about her chickadee. Thanks, Sophie. Uh, yeah, my name is Martha Marie and I have metastatic breast cancer. And for the last 17 months, I've benefited from, well, in many more ways than I ever could have imagined from a variety of Gilda's um, art therapies and art in sort of a, a, a grander sense with Katie, uh, Audra and, and Sophie. Um, I have been working full time for this entire time. Um, and it is indeed ironic that today's exhibition um, also marks my last day of full time work. as I move on to disability in this next chapter of my cancer story. But my thoughts today, I really wanted to provide in two parts. The first was from my first experience of art therapy, and that was with Sophie actually, uh, back in May, uh, 2021. And then I also wanted to bring them home uh, to my, um, my lovely little bird. Um, I actually, came from outside the States. And so I always refer to this as a tit, but um, I appreciate that American lingo. Uh, it's a chickadee and I, should, I have to be aware of that. But anyways, that's that's what we call them. Um, but for my first uh, encounter with art therapy, um, I, I wrote a note to Sophie the day after I did um, my first ever art therapy class. And I, I told her how stressful uh, that time was at work. It was budget week. And um, you can imagine that um, in, a, in a stressful job, uh, a budget week with all the difficult work and personal conversations that you need to have with a variety of people, how much more stressful it can be. And I wrote to Sophie that it was by a stroke of luck that I didn't have a meeting scheduled over the art class I signed up for with you, but I didn't. And when I found myself able to jump on the Zoom call for it, I certainly was expecting to just watch and participate quite passively, but as she was quick to note, I grabbed a Sharpie pen sitting on the side of my desk and the back of my daily priority list, my little three things you're gonna get done and started drawing some lavender. And within minutes, I was drawn into your class and out of my head, I said to Sophie. I had been able to disconnect from the many other pulls on my attention to let go of so much that had piled on top of me that day and that was worrying at my mind. Indeed, the word I would use to describe my state of mind after your class was refreshed, I said to Sophie. I am not an artist and I don't picture purchasing watercolors or colored pencils anytime soon, for the record, I, I have done. Um, but I do look forward to doing more of these art craft classes. Tapping into that creative part of my brain this past Wednesday helped me break through or break that thought process of work and stress, cancer and stress and the whole, I've got to stop feeling like this stress. Pretty cool, I'd say. Um, I continued art therapy and cooking therapy and writing therapy and any, many of those other doing therapies from, from that point on. 
And I think my little tit is, is it, it, it brings such joy because it's, it's sort of a, a crossing point um, for me in, in the art therapy. Um, it's, it's very detailed work in watercolor, et cetera. But the one thing I wanted you to know, note are all the little spatters. Um, there's a little sort of spatter of dots that is done at the very end of the painting that someone suggested one of the videos we watched in the, in the group. And they said, just flick your brush, tap your brush and just get a little flicking. And, and I thought that splatter at the end, that flick of the brush was, uh, was really more than just symbolic. It was a visceral letting go. That was frankly a turning point um, in my ability to let go of, of some of the things that I had going on. And, and, and experienced some kind of joy. I mean, I stepped away and, and, and laughed and smiled when I did that. And that is so rare in times when I find that kind of joy and laughter so limited. So I just have to say thank you. And thank you so much, Martha Marie, for always speaking so well to convey an experience that I think a lot of us have felt and can connect with. Um, yeah, you, you touch me. Thank you. Where there are birds, cats may follow. There is tension in this room. Some of the tension is overtly depicted, as in David Brennan's painting with the cat and the fish. And some of the tension was in the making of the artwork, such as the bird portrait in the center that was created by Ollie Swan with her non-dominant hand. We can all find some relief, however, by looking at Susan Lau's raccoon. He is very chill and, may, and very unpleasant in appearance in a way that might bring us a smile. Here we have some playful imagery of positivity, self-care, freedom. Dionde Brown Whitfield, will you please tell us more about the meaning of your work? Good evening. Um, on the right hand side, that is my cloak of peace. Um, I'm sorry, the stoles of peace. I'm trying to get adjusted here. That's my stoles of peace. Um, what happened is that I was asked to create a stole and um, I didn't do it in a way that I was asked because as a creative person, now <laughs> retired nurse and artist, I look at life different than most people. So the, the stole that I made was beautiful. It was just not to, up to the expectation of the people that asked me to do it. So I started praying and um, then I did, on my own, I just grabbed some paint and I just created this and decided that's gonna be the cover of a book. Um, it's the souls of peace and hope. You know, um, we go through a lot as cancer survivors. I've been a member of Gilda's Club since 2000. And um, I, never did art like everybody else. I mean, Jory used to just always show me that love and encouragement because um, I just never did like everybody else. When I see art, I see something totally different. And he encouraged me to just be myself and be expressive because I am i can't do things like everybody else can, but it still turns out to be beautiful. Um, I believe it's upside down. That's what threw me off because the sun is in the corner. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness. I'm so sorry. That's on me. <laughs> That's okay. You didn't know that that is actually a sun in the lower <laughs> left corner. <laughs> I was trying to figure out why, you know, but it still looks, looks nice. It's just that it, it just threw me on a tangent there. Um, so yeah, I actually made one. I'm going to be making some more stoles and, and giving them away um, along with other paintings and things that I do. And it just made me feel good to know that in spite of the fact that 
I am living with stage four heart failure. I have a heart pump. Um, one of the side effects of having, going through breast cancer um, back in the day when they used the old fashioned chemo, I have to still feel useful. So um, the art therapy is something that I have been doing for a long time. And um, I just enjoy seeing how people are happy with whether or not I do the folkloric type of art or the Afrocentric art. And that's an Afrocentric uh, piece of art right there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Deonde. That is a gorgeous work of art. And we're going to turn it around on its axis for hanging in the slide gallery. I am so sorry. It's, it's gorgeous either way. <laughs> In the center of the room, Melinda Dahl's mosaic, Finite Pathways, Infinite Possibilities, speaks of the unknown potential within all of us. Poised between two of David Brennan's untitled paintings, we can see it may be representing the intersection of L trains, charging into the distance, colliding with the unknown, and as of yet, unrestricted possible futures. The act of sharing his work has been a way of pursuing new possibilities for David Brennan, and I would love for him to tell us more about that. Is David with us today? All right, David. Hi there. Um, my work is watercolors on wet-on-wet uh, -wet technique primarily. <clears throat> And those are six by nines. And I've been painting for a while. Let's see, untitled number three. I made a COVID promise to myself to begin sharing my work with the world. The nice thing about having a good cancer support group is we support one another in all sorts of endeavors. The downside is you have cancer. Um, and my cancer support group is what got me through that harsh sudden impact of you have cancer. Before Gilda's Club, it was a stop. It was a it was a death sentence. Um, and post time with Gilda's Club and my time during Gilda's Club, it turned into like, oh, okay, this is, this is something that is passing. This is something that will keep going along. It's not an end. It's just a journey. Nothing stopped moving. Oh, by the way, you see my signature at Bad Art Global. I'm also here for shameless self-promotion. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. I appreciate that. And I'm so glad you made that COVID promise to yourself to share your work because it, I, I am better for getting to see your stuff. Thank you. Here we see a variety of mediums conveying the brilliant power of the natural world to bring us focus and calm. Again, we see a meditation of stitch in the textile work, the large textile work called God's Sunset by Beth Grady. To the right of it, we see Doris Zagul's photo of a bright daffodil that acts as a beacon out the window. Doris, can you speak a bit further on what you are sharing with your photos and paintings of nature? Yes, I mean, during my cancer journey, it was like 2010 in the spring. And so I always associate spring the years after. And I always, you know, got a joy from nature. So I like sharing photographs and other things. And this was one from my yard. And I wrote a poem. And so the photographs I shared are all related to spring. Thank you so much, Doris.
The artwork we are viewing this evening confronts so many aspects of our lives. This room here is for the balance of the struggle. Some of that struggle is captured in Caitlin's photograph, Sand Snow. In this room, something new might rise between the waves. If we look at Andrea's sketch to the right, I'm going to just embiggen this one. Andreas uses this sketch to share his grieving process after the loss of his father. When he was headed into hospice, he told me the grief and pain would come in waves throughout my life. Throughout my journey, I thought about how the waves weighed me down at times, until one day I imagined myself as a mountain next to the ocean. What happens to a mountain after waves crash into it? Erosion. And from that erosion, beautiful things can occur. The mountain can create more life and space for wildlife. People can create a mountainside community where it wasn't inhabitable before. Life can start. And that was the first time I felt peace in a very long time. Within our community, possibly grown from a mountainside, I would like to invite Erica Davis Johnson to speak on her work, Deborah Davis's Tree of Life. Hello, everyone. I'm Erica Davis Johnson. Glad, glad to be here this evening and wish we all were meeting under different circumstances. Uh, the piece of artwork that you're looking at right now is uh, nine and a half inches by 12. The medium <clears throat> was um, cancer, I'm sorry, <laughs> canvas. And sorry, let me just grab my notes. <laughs> Acrylic uh, paint and metallic gold <clears throat> pens, I'm sorry, eight by 10 inches. I started this piece the night of my mother's funeral. And I finished it over in the next couple of weeks in Audra's Unleashing Your Creativity class. Um, creating this piece on a day that was filled with so much sorrow, my mom's funeral, in lieu of a traditional repast because of you know, COVID, was very, very cathartic experience. The piece showed me how art can actually fit into all facets of your life and emotions can be reflected on a canvas. The piece developed as I continued to get really good feedback from my fellow um, Friday afternoon classmates on other things to consider incorporating into it, like the Adinkra mm -hmm. African symbols, which are actually in each corner of the artwork, and they're actually telling my mom's life story. Um, so keep painting. When it hurts, keep painting. When um, you want to cry, keep painting. When you want to dance, when keep painting. When you want to laugh, keep painting. When you don't want to paint, keep painting. So I think uh, Gilda's Club and all of the creative teachers Audra and Sophie, and then all of the administrators in the background who do everything to make sure that this happens. Thank you. Thank you so much, Erica. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to say one, one thing. This um, piece of artwork also ended up becoming the thank you cards. Um, I photographed that, took it to Walgreens, and then found blank cards. And that piece of artwork is now uh, something that became the thank you cards for the funeral and then for specific family members i gave them a frame so that they could frame it and have a little small four by six of this piece in their house somewhere to pay homage and think of my mom perfect. thank you <laughs> perfect thank you again that is so good The words of Doris the Ghoul stitched. The words that Doris the Ghoul stitched say, Today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. In a way, this Mobius like perspective seems to remind us that we will indeed get through. In the center, Debbie Slowinski's photograph called Serenity seems to promise that there is a greater stillness, a peace, and a hope. At the right, we see Mary Lombardia Sarah's window. It is teeming with life that winds and erupts in leaves of every shape, imaginable soaking up the sunshine. 
Mike Ross's lone candle shines a light in celebration of a child's birthday, the continuation of life, and perhaps the value of perseverance itself. Mike is here to speak about his art making practice. Mike. Hi, all. Um, first, let me say it's really terrific looking at all this art and hearing what people are saying. Uh, wonderful program. As to this piece of art that I did, it was um, my youngest child. Uh, it was her, excuse me, their 31st birthday recently. And um, she's the one who uh, first encouraged me to try and do art uh, as uh, therapy. And she went out, excuse me, they went out and bought um, canvases and uh, art materials and brought them to my hospital room. Unfortunately, I was too weak to, to actually do any painting at that time. But um, once I started to recover, I um, inquired about Jupp excuse me, joining community art, um, since I'm really, I don't know if beginner would be the right word. I think I'm more like a pre-beginner. Uh, so um, I was encouraged to join and it, lo and behold, it really was a fantastic experience. And the ability to uh, make this art, particularly this painting was so joyful for me because it was something that I, I could give to my child. And um, she ac they actually come once in a while to the community art and which they love very much. And so I was able to present this to them uh, at a community art session. So uh, you can't get it much better than that in life. So despite the leukemia and all the struggles and the pain and the fatigue, uh, there's something beautiful out there that um, Gilda's Club gives us a chance to grab a hold of. And I thank you all. And thank you, Mike. Thank you for sharing that. Here we find rebirth, the blossoms of spring, the bees that connect one flower to another to make more flowers, the paper from the recycle bin that blooms into a rose. Becky Clemens's photograph, Survival Beating the Odds, highlights where one might find sparks of hope in unexpected places. Hello, everybody. Um, now I'm nervous. I don't know why. Anyway, this this photograph was taken um, after my very first bout with cancer six years ago. And um, I've been a photographer and an artist my whole life. Um, my photography is not the normal um, large landscapes and, and views of mountains and things, but rather I focus on the close-ups, the things that many of us can miss. And um, there was one day I was in the woods, which I'm always in the woods looking for something to shoot. Um, and it was right after my diagnosis and I was totally overwhelmed and felt lost. I didn't, I, the treatment hadn't started yet. I was just so overwhelmed with it. So I went to the woods, couldn't didn't see anything that day to shoot a picture of. As I was going back to my car, I saw this and it was, it was in the fall. I mean, all the grass was gone. You know, the greenness was gone out of the grass. This was an area where they had dug up a pathway. They were going to put in a new concrete path. All around it was this broken concrete. And 
in the middle of it was this dandelion. And it just struck me how beautiful it was. I never thought a weed would be beautiful, but it was, um, when I looked at it, I, I thought my first thought was that it was survival, beating the odds or against all odds in the middle of this concrete with no water around. Here was this dandelion just growing and glowing and so bright yellow. Um, I refer to it very often now with my second bout with cancer um, and it comforts me. It just survival beating the odds is what it says and, and what it means to me. Um, that and the wonderful things that Gilda's Club has offered um, to all of us going through a cancer journey. Um, I was introduced to Gilda's Club um, by a friend and neighbor um, in the parking lot of our condo complex. And she was the first one, it's Debbie Slowinski. She was the first one who told me about Gilda's Club. I cannot say enough about this, this place. It, I tease everybody. I said, I think there's something in the water that they have you drink because I have never met anybody, any group of people who are so totally committed and giving. Um, it, 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 you all just blow me away. I can't thank you all enough for it. And I'm going to stop before I start crying. Okay. Thank you all for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Becky. Thank you for sharing your, your vision to find those little sparks of hope. So how do we keep hope alive? Well, we feed it, of course. <laughs> so here we are looking at some savory items. Um, I also want to point out that we have Felicia Carparelli's imposter food that is snuck in. Um, it is um, posing as a chicken pot pie, but it's actually made of um, pudding and candies. So um, anyway, don't be fooled. Martha Marie Kleinhand's photographs are as delicious as the food she prepared with the kitchen table. She says that cooking and baking calm her and become her mindfulness. And with these desserts, we have come full circle considering ways that we that we find to make maintain community. Jackie Branstein bakes chocolate cookies, cupcakes, fruit pies, and other delectables that she gives away to friends and neighbors. Sharing treats is an excellent way to keep your connections strong. As we are nearing the end of our path together this evening, we arrive at two artists who have used photography to document a loved one's experience with cancer. On the right, Pat Hazier's photo essay, Joe's Journey, shows the ways laughter, exercise, yoga, and all parts of life contributed to his healing. On the left, you will see the photo portrait by Warren Pearlstein called The Ashers in Remission. Tracy Asher is here to expand, expand on our understanding of this photograph. Can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me? Okay, great. I'm in a car. I'm not driving. But I'm yeah, in a good. car. So hearing everybody's stories and seeing all this amazing artwork, I, I'm i scrapping what I was going to say because now I understand what all this beautiful artwork is all about. So... What I'll say about the Ashers in Remission is that my dad, my dad and I have been photo documenting my three diagnoses with cancer, breast cancer, then, and in 2019, metastatic in my brain. I 
I decided very early on I wanted to, I could track my progress. And as I showed people and other cancer patients and doctors and thrivers, I came to realize the important impact it could have on people with questions about what cancer looks like. So we photographed a lot and we created an exhibit and I'm in the process of finishing a book. Um, the Asher's in Remission fits into this exhibit at Gilda's Club because it comes right out of COVID. It symbolizes the life that that life can be renewed no matter what the obstacles are and no matter what your new me looks like. With or without masks, we all feel like we look different coming out of cancer than going into cancer. And that's okay. And you can work through it. And you can go back to work. And you can see people and see friends and stay healthy. Whether you wear a mask or do your hair differently or your makeup differently, whatever your new me is, is important and powerful. And that's what I hope to show through um, all the photographs. Um, it's called One Cancer Patient. If you wanna find it on social media, it's One Cancer Patient. And you can see all, all the photos all the way through. And it's just been my therapy to help show what cancer looks like and hopefully ease some fears of the unknown that we all feel when we have to experience something brand new. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. My dad, my dad is the one in Chicago. He told me about Gilda's Club and it's love everybody I've met thank you so much Tracy thank you so much for reaching and connecting with us from afar that's part of what we're all learning how to do right now. And I'm so grateful that you could tune in tonight. Now, I want to remind you that for the sake of time, I was unable to highlight every work of art in this exhibition. Even though I would have loved to, I, I'm pretty sure we would have a lot more people would have had to go and have dinner and fall asleep and go to bed and start your tomorrows. But what I want you to do is I want you to come back. <laughs> I would love for you to find these two writings that we have here at the end of our show. Um, find some time, tuck into them, and read them when you can. Also, please come back. Because the good news is, this gallery will be added. Oops, <laughs> wrong way, wrong way. <laughs> this gallery will be added to the Gilda's Club video library, and it will be accessed at the top of our um, website. And then you can all feel free to view it. Everyone who had work in the show tonight will be sent the link tonight to view and share with your friends and loved ones. And um, everyone else will be able to find it at the top of our website through our video library. Um, thank you so much. I am so grateful to everyone who showed up tonight, to everyone who shared and gave of their stories and themselves. Um, I am just 
I am without words.